Hey, welcome back to another object-oriented tutorial. So what we need to talk about now is interfaces, okay? Interfaces. Now, an interface is kind of like an abstract class, but the difference is uh, it's not actually a class. It's an interface. Hmm. So what are the differences, though? So as you can see here in abstract classes, when I declare an abstract class like this one, I do not implement it, okay? I just leave it hanging like that. But inside the abstract class, I can still add normal classes there or normal functions like this one here. However, in the interface, I cannot do that, but otherwise everything else um, is pretty much the same. So I'll, I'll put one here so you can see the difference. So you start with the keyword interface, of course. So um, let's try and create an interface called database. For example, and let's run this and see what, uh, let me remove all this. So just like an abstract class, you cannot um, you cannot instantiate an interface. Okay, it's just like these abstract classes, and you cannot add uh, variables as well, like here, because it's not a class. All you can do is add constants, variables that are constant and can never change. That's what you can add there. So database there, capital. So let us refresh. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now the problem is we've written the same name here. So let's try and use uh, something else. So say interface user. Mm -hmm. So nothing there. So um, what makes the, the interface unique from uh, an abstract class, for example, any other class, is that with interfaces, um, you can do the same thing that you do with classes, but with abstract classes, except that uh, you can't put normal functions, but you instead of just extending, because here you see class product extends database, I can only extend one class at a time. So if I had two classes that I both had good functionality that I needed, I cannot extend both of them at once, but I can do so with an interface. I can, in, um, I can extend two interfaces. So let's see that in action for a second. And then instead of uh, extending, we implement. So we say implement, is that the, the correct spelling? Yes, that's the correct one right there. Implement uh, user. So let's just put product over there so that it looks more uh, reasonable. Uh -huh. And then we'll put phone here and it implements product. Yeah, much better. Uh -huh. And let's remove this here. Oh, I'll leave it there. So as you can see here, we have an interface and it implements. it's implemented by phone. So if I come back here and refresh, I don't expect to see any errors, quite fine. But now let's imagine I have an interface. This one is for product, but I have another one for database as well. Yeah. Now I want both functionalities of this inside the class that I want here. So what to do? If I refresh here, I see none of that. No problem. So I can implement product and put a comma and implement database as well like this yeah see there it is a thing of beauty okay so now i get functionality from both this and that which is pretty cool mm -hmm. now the thing is an interface is a contract between the interface itself and a class so whatever function i declare in here just like an abstract class i must implement it here that's why we're using the word implement here I, I'm not implementing anything here. 
all I need to do is a function show like that and then uh, since the signature there requires two variables so I will put those two variables there and just like that so now when I do this it's fitting that I'm implementing it there okay so in a case like this I will get no errors whatsoever but if I have two of these let's say show do yeah and I don't implement it in the other function I will get a complaint class phone contains one abstract method and must therefore be declared abstract or implement the remaining methods mm -hmm. see there this one must be implemented so let's try and move it to the other product here mm -hmm. and let's try the same thing right so we, we still get the same error so whichever item I'm implementing I must actually implement the function itself that's what the implement tells you to do okay so like this we'll be home and dry so what's the use of this anyway so the use is that if for example I have a an interface for a database now a database does very uh, specific things like for example uh, it will read from the database it will write to the database and sometimes it will update the database so all those things are things that I know for sure I need to have in a database class of some kind right so let's try and see how having an interface like this uh, is beneficial so for example let's say function in here and let's say uh, read yes mm -hmm. let's put three two more read write and of course updates and there will be one for delete but this is enough to illustrate the point I'll remove this one so we don't have to worry about it now the thing is in here I will implement so let's implement just the database by itself mm -hmm. so copy these guys and paste them here okay so like this mm -hmm. so now I have a contract interface which is a contract with uh, th this class has a contract with interface and it needs to implement and it's doing exactly that so it has implemented the two okay so there will be some code there now imagine this is the code for reading from the database now reading from the database you sometimes have to loop you say for each let me let me do that for each mm -hmm. yeah for each something something so for each rows as row yes so we're imagining that uh, we read something from the database and then we go through each row and then we do whatever we want to do or maybe return the result okay so now imagine we have a MySQL database that we're doing this on and then later on we decide uh, let's use a Oracle database instead mm -hmm. so instead of uh, having to redo our code all we need to do is uh, change the implementation here everything else here remains the same you see we have the same code the same here the same that now when we um, when we return the code here for example let me say I'm returning rows over here so like this okay so in this implementation I return the rows like this and then once I return this uh, these rows are being used somewhere else right because this is the implementation of read which was signed by the contract there now if I decide to use a different kind of database I could just uh, copy this class like this I'm still implementing database okay nothing changes there but then I will change the way I read from that database because it's a different database now so this one will be phone Oracle database for example so then I will change the implementation so the rest of the code in my uh, app will not change because 
exactly what I was returning from here is what I will return here, even though the read method has changed. So I'll just change a few things in this function and then everything remains the same. Okay. So I kind of think uh, it's a bit abstract now for you to see what's going on, but uh, uh, don't worry about it. Interfaces are not really that common in uh, programming unless you are, it's a team project, you know, whenever there's a big team uh, in a big company, you will find interfaces there because uh, the head programmer must tell you what functions you need to implement. For example, he will say, we are going to have a database class and then these are the methods we will have. We'll have one for read, we'll have one for write, we'll have one for update, okay? And then he'll give you this interface to use. So now everybody must follow this system here because that's what the interface says. So every time you uh, implement the database class, you must make sure that everything in there is given. That way, even if the team has 10 or 20 people, it doesn't matter because you're all going to be implementing the same functions, just different implementation of the same thing. So you will see this in action eventually. Uh, so just your takeaway from this should be that interfaces are good because you can implement several of them in one class and then they give a standard for your programming because once you give, uh, you declare these functions here, they must be implemented somewhere else and so on. So hopefully uh, that was uh, useful information one way or another. You will see a live example where we use these things in a few videos later. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.